your host for the evening, Monica Brinkman, and it is Sunday, and as you know, that means it is time for our musical guest interview show. I always look forward to these shows because we present different genres, we present artists from all over the world, and we love, love, love giving them the opportunity to... um, you know, show a little bit more than just the music, even though we will have music. So, hello, gentlemen. Evening. Hello. I wanted to introduce all of you to Joe Sim and hey. Jeff McGraw. And hello. they are from the metal band Axe Master, correct? 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, yep. you, uh, from what I understand, you um, are in the East Coast, correct? Yeah. Not really East Coast. Uh, more like kind of uh, Ohio. Area? Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the heart of it all. I was, <laughs> you know, I've been hearing a lot about Ohio though lately. I'm that so they've got quite a music scene going there. There's a lot of cool bands here. Yeah. yeah there, there, there's a large number of bands and musicians in the area. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess we do. Yeah, so that's a big music scene. A lot of places don't have that. So uh, and We have more bands and places to play. That's Yeah, for sure. <laughs> exactly. That's and that's what you need. You <laughs> need sure. those venues, you know, uh, so people can yeah, get to know you. I find X-Master's history, though, so very fascinating. Um. I mean, they, it's been a while, right, Joe? Since yeah, oh, yeah. You it's been a long band. while. Back when I was, like, 19. Uh, was, uh, <laughs> and that's been a while. <laughs> We're going to date him today. You Too know. long. <laughs> Carpet dating. <laughs> because that was back, like, in, in the 80s, mid-80s and such. And, 85 um, I started this. What made you decide to go towards metal? sound I, I just loved it i when i was first introduced to it i was addicted almost immediately and there's jeff is a lot more eclectic in his taste of things that he likes to listen to yes to me i mean i when, when i was in elementary school i first got turned on to kiss kiss alive uh -huh. and after that it was just a progression and that that's all i just love metal it, it's it's like it's as much a part of me as my hand yeah and, and metal has a huge following also i, I don't well, know I don't that it will ever die you know people said oh it died out after like the 80s and 90s and no it didn't it's been there forever yeah it wasn't really commercially doing very well but there, there's always been fans, loyal fans. There's always been bands. And you're right. It, it, no matter how much you're able to financially <laughs> do it, it's still going to be around. That's right, um, because there's people that love the sound. Well, Jeff, what made you decide? Because I, I, I know that um, you've, been, you've gone through a little bit of a metamorphosis, and we'll talk about th that, Joe. But what made you decide, hey, okay, I'm going to go with this metal band? What was that, um, about eight years ago or so? Or? Uh, it was, what, 2012, 2011, somewhere okay. in that vicinity. Um, and, and it's not that I've been in heavy bands before it's not it's not my first foray into heavy music um just my first foray into heavy music that had something of an already existing following when i joined yes um the first time i got into heavy music uh, my sister i was eight years old and she gave me a handful of cassettes and was like bread ccr and black sabbath Yes. And at, at, at Black Sabbath, I was just like, oh, my God, what is this? And uh, so I've always I've been into heavy music for a long time. But what Joe says is correct. I mean, I'm kind of eclectic. I, I write stuff anywhere or I listen to stuff from classical to really, really extreme forms of metal uh, country. I, I just have this wide range of stuff that I listen to. But everything that I write and my lyric quality that when I write – tends to be pretty dark. <laughs> so, yeah, well, Jeff, Jeff, one time, uh, well, you've played me a couple of non-metal songs that you've written. Yeah. And I, the, it's really good stuff. It's really yeah, good. I've got a country yeah, you should album sneak in there. one in there every once in a while. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Axe Master could quite deal with the, uh, with, with the, uh, the three-chord progression country stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, if you listen to it as a musician, I mean, it's some it's some viable stuff. I mean, yes. it, it's something that I mean, if the right per like if you wanted to sell the song to the right person, I think it would do well. Yes, from what I heard. But yeah, so but That's metal has always compliment. been uh, metal has always kind of been my uh, my fallback. You know, I might go through phases where I'm listening to something 
like uh, I'm listening to Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats right now. Um, but uh, you're also going to find Nevermore and Sanctuary and Black Sabbath and a bunch of other bands mixed into that too. I don't just, uh, I keep falling back to metal. It's where my heart really lies. I'm and talking what's weird Black is, what's Sabbath. Weird? That Black Sabbath's name always comes up, it seems, with the metal. Oh, yeah. They are like the guru. <laughs> they're the gods. Yeah. yeah, they're 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 the guys who really I mean, you know, I'm sorry that Tony Iomi went to work that day and cut two fingers off. <laughs> That's right. But it's it's what, it's what created made the sound. The sound. Um, yep. and those guys just those guys had it and you know, that 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 whole thing, I mean I own everything they've ever done, including the stuff that's not officially Sabbath. Um, I mean, they they created that dark, doomy, heavy, ponderous, you know, weighty feel, and right. you can't ever ignore that. Even the guitar sound, mm -hmm. it was, well, the, the was guitar totally riffs. revolutionary. Yeah, some of those the riffs are wonderful, and you guys are excellent with the guitar riffs, by the way. Um, Thank you. I have to say something though. Jeff, you're very modest, and I think Joe will say that also, because <laughs> yeah, I've absolutely. been reading about how people are comparing your vocals to the vocals of original X Master. Okay, I haven't read this. Okay, <laughs> I haven't either. Oh, they, they're they're wonderful. They say you're ferocious. <laughs> You've got the sound, but I have to read this because this made me laugh. Okay. It says the vocals of of guitarist Jeff McGraw are as hypnotic and mesmerizing as the music behind them. Oh. It's as if Allison Chains ingested copious amounts of acid and peyote and spawned a song. Uh, uh, I <laughs> love Allison Chains. <laughs> I like that. I like that. No, I've not, that I've not read that one. That was, I just, you know, he put some thought into that before he wrote it, but it was excellent. It was, so, um, Joe, I, you took a little bit of a break from metal per se for a little well, bit, no, right? No. You changed your sound a bit? Well, it wasn't, when the band became the awakening in like the, uh, early to mid 90s mm -hmm. it was it was just not quite as heavy there was no thrash in it okay uh, per se it, there, i still had uh, it instead of maybe black sabbath and slayer like what is kind of what i think a lot of the music is now that and iron maiden uh, kind of sound. I think that, you know, it, it was more like a combination of Black Sabbath and hard rock. You yes. know, maybe like the heavier Foreigner or something like that. Like the tunes that were more heavy by them. And the stuff, I mean, I, it, it's good stuff. It is I, good stuff. I like, I like it. It, it. Most of it just wasn't me. And that was one big reason that I got out of it. Yeah. Or out of that band and dissolved it was it just wasn't what I wanted to play. I let people talk me into and doing, doing something that. that I should have never done. I mean, I heard bitching about it for two years. <laughs> wanting to change the name and and play stuff that was a little more radio friendly. And you know they, and then talking me into playing and, covers that I did not want to play. Oh, uh, you know, Joe, and it shows because the best artists are the artists that get on stage and get lost in either the vocals or the music or both, and it portrays. It comes from within. Yeah. It, that's the best performances. So when you're trying to do something that your heart's not really in, it, it'll be okay. And it'll be good, but it's not going to be like what you're yeah. doing right now. And I mean, I actually think on that Awakening album is some of the best guitar I've ever recorded lead-wise. Yeah. But I don't know. It, Looking back, I mean, the covers and all that, I, I'm not one that, I have not played a cover since that band. So I have, 
I have not play played one. a cover song in twenty in twenty years other than that Power of the Horde tune. Yeah, we played one. <laughs> he played one. <laughs> See, he's and it was, I mean, it was a cover, <laughs> but what it wasn't a cover that the that. Well, you explain it, Jeff. You you video, were the brainchild behind it. <laughs> um, it's a video game song. Um, uh, lots of people are familiar. If you've never even played it, it's called World of Warcraft. And there's this song that some of the developers formed a band. And this song, they put in, they recorded a song and they put it into the video game. And now there are points where you can actually go see that band as... As the video characters? As, as the video characters in the game on the hour every hour for one week a month. <laughs> Oh was it didn't, didn't like Anthrax cover that song too? No, uh, I heard Jim, no. Jim said that he saw something on YouTube about that. Not Anthrax. Uh, the band performed at the video games con video game makers convention, and George Corpse Grinder Fisher from Cannibal Corpse sang it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you a gamer, Jeff? I am. <laughs> I, I'm the official band I don't band know what fork. gave that away. But, well, listen, guys, I'm ready for some music. So okay. we're going to go ahead and listen to some fantastic X-Master music. Well, and then we'll be you. back and we will chat a little bit more with Jeff and Joe. See you in a sec. Bye-bye.
Welcome to Chamber Studios, where I'm recording the new Axemaster album. I'm Joe Sims, lead guitarist of Axemaster, and I use the Sinister guitar pick White Lightning because it has this hollowed out center that gives me an amazing grip on the pick. So I use this pick exclusively now. Uh, I'm Jeff McGraw of Axemaster, uh, and I use the Sinister guitar pick Spitfire. Uh, it's an amazing pick, very sharp tip larger than a Jazz 3, so it's got uh, more gripping space for a great control and uh, that literal sharp tip for an amazing accuracy. And I love this pick. <laughs> Radio. This is Monica Brinkmain, and if you did not catch the first part of our show, shame on you. But oh, we are speaking with two members of Axemaster, and the founder, of course, Joe Sim, and vocalist Jeff McGraw. Now, um, you're making quite, quite a name already with a new release that you have out and just the name of the release alone is um is wonderful and i want to get this right because i'm going to look it up crawling chaos correct <laughs> yeah and i does that have what uh 10 tracks on it uh, i believe so <laughs> if you in yes you know, the, tracks. <laughs> with damon's instrumental yeah Okay, hey, instrumentals are great. You know, I'm, we do play instrumentals on our show also in with other types of music. And I, I think that those go, you know, the instrumentalists, they don't get the praise that they deserve. <laughs> well, actually, how that instrumental came about was uh, we added a, for the first time in the history of Axemaster, a, perm like a permanent second lead player um, named Damon Bennett. And oh. uh, he, the the guy is just a phenomenal player. He is, he is a shredder for sure. And um, but the thing is, when he when he joined the band, we had pretty much already written all the material for the album. He added some guitar parts here and there, but the songs the themselves were already put together. And um, we were talking about doing an album intro and the album intro morphed into the instrumental that he did. He, he played everything on that. Wow. Uh, all the guitar, all the keyboards and uh, keyboards and everything. And I, yeah, I, I really, it, it's really cool. And the guitar work he does in that is just unreal. But, you know, and I wanted to make sure that he had, he was represented on the album. His writing Good. was represented. I thought that was important you know, for, for him to make him feel more a part of things when he, you know, was a lot more new than he is now. Yeah, we already spent a couple, a month or two hazing him, so, you know, had to make him feel special. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least we didn't do a Metallica Jason Newstead no, to no, him. No, no, we didn't really haze him. I just picked on him a lot because, you know, I can now say somebody in the band. You didn't want to than scare him away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think... Um, the, the combination you have right now as far as vocals and um, instrumentals is outstanding. It's the most powerful you've probably ever been. Well, thank you. And Thanks. this yeah, album I think shows it I think also. This is, this is my personal favorite album. 
Yeah. Oh, I think it's everyone. So if they once they hear it, um, I wanted to find out though. Who is? Do you, as a vocalist, Jeff? Do you write all the lyrics to the music, or does everybody join in on that? Or, um, this album is a little bit different than the last one. The last one I wrote all the lyrics. Uh -huh. We have two songs on this album that are older tunes that we redid for this album. We um, changed a those, lot on them too. Those are not really changed lyrically. As far as the rest of the lyrics, yes, I write them. Um, okay. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell somebody that no, you, uh, you, you, you can't. <laughs> but I, I tend to be a bit protective. Of, I, 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 I would see this in myself. I do. I would tend to be a bit protective of the lyrics because if I'm singing them, I kind of want to have control over them. But that doesn't mean that I won't sing other things. I mean, I sing Joe's a bunch of Joe's songs from right. previous. Um, but I do really like to write lyrics. Um, okay. He's when, great at it too. And when I write them, half the time it's metaphorical, so you don't even really know what I'm writing about. So <laughs> to me, that adds Conceptual, another layer. Conceptual, aren't they? <laughs> Do you think that's what attracts metal fanatics <laughs> or fans, I should say, um, to, to that type degree. of music because they can listen to something and get different meanings from it? To, to some degree, that is true. Makes them think a little bit. Yeah, because uh, that's the stuff I like in heavy metal. I don't yeah. necessarily, I don't necessarily hear something and go, you know, well, that's obviously what it means. I like to think about it a little bit, and the fact that mostly metal has a penchant for discussing topics and not dark. just, you know, dark topics, political topics, things, things that you know you do think about. Um, yeah, I think that draws me in more than most other things. I mean, yeah, sure, uh, a decent country tune can be fine um, if you're in the right mood for it, but it doesn't make you think. Uh, you know, it's a boy and a girl. Your wife and, and ride on a train. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, um, but you know, heavy metal should tell a story, and it, and yours does. Yeah, they heavy tell metal stories. Is not that. And whether it's current affair stories or, you know, a, a, you know, folk music, which has died away, used to oh. do the same thing. And yeah. I think metal took its place, but it instilled instead of this, you know, cute little girl sitting there with her guitar and this little dress and flowers in her hair saying, oh, no war, peace. You said, doggone it, no war, no peace. No, we want peace. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I like the. We, we tend to. We the way you first said that tends to be the way the way metal looks at things like no war, no peace, um, and it's whereas you know it, it. The best bands out there, and I don't want to feel like I'm including us in that because that's up to the fans. That's up to the fans. <laughs> but the best, but the best well bands said. out there. <laughs> the best bands out there for me put out an idea that goes against normalized thinking. Like, it would be no war, let's have peace. But metal bands would say no war, no peace. Yes. Um, and that, that, that makes you think a little more. You're like, well, what does that mean? Um, yeah, it, that's the attraction that it holds for me. Is, is almost, almost philosophical. <laughs> and one other thing, one other thing about metal that is really big for me as a musician and, you know, just as a fan, if you compare it to other genres of music other than, let's say, prog, yes. um, the music, lyrics, and everything, you people accept a lot of different things. You know, if you look at, like, hard rock, which I like, or AOR or something like that, there's kind of a narrow band of like music that I, that is kind of accepted for the most part. I think in metal, you really have more of a way to be creative and do different things and think outside the box. Yeah. And there, 
I value creativity so much. Scene, you know, than yeah. a lot of the others. But it's it, not. Yeah, I mean, because... I mean, you're only you're only really limited by your own imagination and writing ability. You know, exactly. there's no rules. And what you can do with instrumentals, you know, uh, guitar's killer. It is indeed. And, and that's what I love about it. I mean, I've been playing guitar for almost 40 years. Yes. No, for, no, for over 40 years. And um, no, no, it hasn't been that. It's been right no. at four years. And, you know, I'm still learning stuff. Yeah, I'm still I'm still coming up with things that I've never come up with before on guitar, and that's what I love about it. You know, if you think that you've learned everything, you might as well get out of it because you're going to start going backwards real fast. Very wise. Be, and you're so right. Um, you're going to miss an opportunity also if you get an attitude like that because you never know. Um, who you're going to meet, where you're going to meet them. Right. What's, right. Uh, there's people that struggle for, you know, 20, 30 years, and all of a sudden, overnight, boom, somebody says, wow, I'm really interested in them. And besides all of that, and you guys are successful. I mean, you, you've got quite a following. But you're successful in the fact that you're doing what you want to do and what you love Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Right. I'm a big fan of, I'd rather do this and yep. anything. <laughs> so what if can I, they expect in this album? I mean, um, this one's a little more, a little more like my listening patterns. It's more eclectic. Um, we've got some shredders in there. We wrote a song that is definitively kind of like our tribute to like the 80s new wave of British heavy metal and Judas Priest and those sounds. Um, you know, we've got that instrumental, which is, uh, uh, oh, I can never remember the full title. Mystify the Dream Hypnotic. Yeah, and it's it really, it's kind of hypnotic and dreamy. And uh, so, so, I mean, I wrote a, I wrote an, almost ballad for this <laughs> it's, not really, it's not really a ballad but but it starts out that way yeah yeah um i love it uh there, there's all there's all kinds of stuff on this album it's very it's the first album i think that we kind of we all kind of sat down we all had an input on even damon who came in late uh so you know we wrote some songs together joe you know, Kip brought in some riffs. We changed things. It was uh, an ongoing concerted effort between all of us. So it's a little more eclectic. It's not like uh, uh, Overture to Madness. Was it us two, really, for the most part? Yeah. Um, and uh, and there, there's an ongoing theme throughout that album. Yes. Which is not bad. I love the album. Right. But uh, this one's kind of like where that one would be a novel and it all goes together. This one is kind of like a book of short stories yeah, um, bunch of because flash it kind of, right? yeah, because it's kind of like, you know, okay, here's a story by this author um, that has this certain feel and here's a song that has a different feel. Um, so, you know, this one's a little more eclectic, but uh, it's still a really solid album. I like it. Well, for and for heard... me, my, my favorite all time song that I've ever written or recorded or anything is is the title track crawling chaos, crawling chaos. I, I absolutely love that song love it's my all-time fave yeah yeah from the reviews i've seen they rave about it you know among other songs um in in the album they're just they're saying it's a solid album you know uh where can people go to get this now what's the if they what's the best place for the them to go to find out about you and to purchase any um, merchandise or to purchase any um, uh, CDs or um, even your older material. Um, we can have actually, a bunch of website. Yeah. Your website. We have, our, we have our website, which is axemasterofficial.com. You get the new album or even, I guess, the last albums you can get just about anywhere. Amazon. Uh, Walmart. Walmart.com. Uh, if you're in the UK, uh, it's in stores over there, but you can always go to Pure Steel Good. Records. Uh, Pure Steel Records will sell it to you. We'll sell it to you. 
<laughs> the way that the way that I tell people is, uh, if you're going to do a mail order, if you're in the states, go with a with a with either us or a place in the states, because people are saying, well, pure steel records, it's going to cost me blah 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 blah. It costs like ten bucks to ship the CD from there to here. Exactly. You know, so. But I say if you're in Europe, you can. It, it's probably better if you go through Pure Steel. If you're in okay. the states, probably better if you go through us, or Walmart, or, or Amazon, of, or eBay. If you want to earn eBay bucks, <laughs> according to what you have set up. But they, the best place to check it out, though, is your website, which is xmasterofficial.com. Yes. Yeah. There's stuff being sold there on the web store that is being sold nowhere else. Wow. Right. And, and you can you get can, to the web store from there, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right from your site. So it's on, on the it's part of the site. Wow. Yeah. I'm just, uh, you know, you, you, I'm so happy that you took some time today to spend with us. Let us know you a little bit. My see pleasure. what's going on. And um, do you have shows coming up? Uh, we've got a couple. Um, we'll be, with more coming, uh, we'll be at the Empire in... Akron, Ohio, on uh, the tenth next weekend. This weekend. This weekend. Ooh, that's fast. Um, Which has actually already happened when this comes. Out. Yeah, when we're gonna yeah. air this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's and okay. I know you got more coming up. March nineteenth, is it? I think it's the sixteenth. I honestly don't know, but in March we'll I be performing with. Click. We'll be performing uh, with Acts of Defiance in Kent, Ohio. Now, Acts of Defiance and. Is I'm actually really looking forward to this one because that is the new band from old Megadeth members, uh, Chris Broderick and Sean Drover. And uh, I've been a big Chris Broderick guitar work oh, fan for like He's forever. Guys, just, total beast. just an incredibly stunning player. Um, so I get, I get to see that up close and perform on the same well, stage. Great. It'll be a lot of fun for me. And then in May, we're doing something. Um, we got a big Pure Steel festival lined up for uh, next September, September. <laughs> in, in Detroit, a at Harpo's in Detroit. Um, um, well, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Um, okay. All I can say <laughs> to um, anyone who's in the area, uh, please get out and see the show because it's a fantastic show they put on. <gasps> Uh, I love your music, and of course, I'm, you know, yeah, we're going to buy the CDs, we're going to buy the vinyls, but on top of that, if anyone has the opportunity to see this group, X Master, in person, please do so. There's nothing like it. Well, thank because you. You're going to get that. Thank you very much. Oh, you're, there's just a connection that's made. Yeah, shows. well, Thank and you. the thing is, we're we're extremely fan friendly. We ask anybody come up to the merch table, hang out, BS with us. Anybody, I mean, you, it's easy to find us online. We're everywhere, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you know, I make sure of that. And <laughs> I, you know, fans, feel free to get in touch. I mean, sometimes it might take a little bit to get back, depending on how busy things are going. Right, but. We always love to hear from fans and you know the way that like our uh, rjd did with the fans back when he was with us you know that that's the way bands should be with their fans oh yeah and i'm i personally, why do you make the music for your fans you want to hear from them hey i remember when i was 16 and a fan of all these different bands before i had, ever done squat and you know to think now all these years later you know i'm honored that we i have fans yes you know because i still i still remember that 16 year old who would have done anything to go meet rob halford uh, or you know something like like that you know or go backstage and hang with bands or whatever i'm still that guy and, still that you guy, know, yeah. I've I've been told a lot of times that 
it's like, well, you know, uh, you don't act like most musicians in your position. I'm like, you know, too many, too many musicians that I've known over the years, they think they're better because of their success in the music, ego. which is just stupid. Yeah. It's not like, not like I'm saving a kid in a burning building or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing song. I'm writing and performing songs, which is cool, but that's sure yourself. Don't make me any better than anybody else. You know, well, maybe a- I worked harder, you know, I mean, I, I, and I'm just talking about as a person, just as no, a human it, it's, but that's being a true professional also. Like you, just the fact that you said that statement, you also made the statement that you're always learning. Yeah. You don't think you know it all. Uh, if I wasn't learning all the time, I wouldn't be as interested. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, people, listen, guys, I, first of all, I wanted to mention that um, originally uh, they were, X Master was set up to meet with Carrie. And yeah. they were so kind when I approached them. And I said, listen, um, you know, she suddenly passed away. Can we still do the interview? Because we adore your music and we want people to know you. And right away they said, yes. And we certainly appreciate you working with us on that. That was wonderful of you. Anytime. That, that was that I, I couldn't believe it when, when I read your letter. Yeah. I was floored. And I wondered I had wondered why I hadn't heard from her. Yes. You know, and obviously because she was in the hospital and right. you know. Whenever whenever we lose somebody who seemed to be a really cool person, you know, it's a loss. To every to everybody out there, and it condolences. We've been losing what? way too many. And condolences. One of the she said to me was, "You better get back to them, and if I can't be there, you take care of them. <laughs> you know I will." <laughs> well, I'm sure I can speak for everybody in the band that we send our condolences to her family, oh. friends, all her loved ones. Well, thank you so much. I know they appreciate that, and um. You know, guys, please stay in touch with us and keep sending us music that we oh, can yeah. share with other people. Let us know any news that's going on with you and stop back again. You know, maybe sometime Anytime. later this year or so. We'll see. All what's you got to do is say the word and we'll be here. That yeah, sounds we- great. And guys, buy their music. Woo! <laughs> 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 and for now, we're going to leave you with some more wonderful, wonderful sounds from the outstanding Ohio band, Axe Master. Bye, guys. Bye.